All right, grade 11s, um, so just looking at exercise 3 on page 154 of your Mind Action Series book, they've asked you to sketch the following graphs as well as write down the period of the function. So we are working with the period shift. Now, the way we know that a period shift has happened is that there is a number in front of the x in our function, and that means that the period is no longer 360 degrees for sine, but we have changed it um, from 360 to 90 by dividing by this 4. Right, so whatever's the coefficient of that angle is your change in period. So you divide it into your original period. Okay, so um, just looking at A, B, and C to start, um, we are looking at sine 4x. You can use your calculator to plot it, but it is quite nice to just use um, the method I showed you in exercise 2 using the original function. So the original function for sine has these values, the yellow values. So from negative 360 to 360, it's 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. So it goes in a pattern, so you can learn it off by heart or quickly pop it into your calculator. But then to get a new period, we're only affecting the x value. So the x values are being divided by 4. And so those become your new coordinates, negative 90 and 0, negative 65 and a half and 1, negative 45 and 0. So each x value has been divided by 4. So then your graph will look like this. Okay, so you can plot it or again use your calculator. And they ask you to work out the new period. You take the original period divided by the period shift. And that gives you 90 degrees. So we can see within 90 degrees, there's a full sine graph, 0 to 90, because you've got a full mountain and a valley of the sine graph. Okay, for B, B has two things happening. It's got that negative in front of cos, which means it's reflected um, on the x-axis, and it's got that period shift in front of the x. All right, so if we look at the cos graph from 0 to 360 originally, our new period, we're going to divide by our x by 3s. So all our x values are going to be divided by 3. That's to get our new period, our new values. And then our, uh, let's grab another color. Our y values are going to be multiplied by negative 1 to do the amplitude change. All right, so your new points are going to be these ones here. All right, um, and so you can see every 30 degrees, so 0 to 30 to 60 to 90, every 30 degrees, we're going negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Okay, so we're alternating negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. So you can carry on in the domain that they've asked you for. So we've only got in our x values up to 120 which is over there, but you can carry on that pattern. So we start with negative 1, 0, positive 1, 0, negative 1, 0, positive 1, 0, and then we go negative 1, 0, so it alternates. All right, so then even though you only had up to there, you can continue the pattern for the 360 degrees that they want. So let's see how many graphs we see. Remember, a cos graph will have its full mountain and the start of the valley there. So we've got one, two, three graphs within 360 degrees. That's what the three stands for. How many graphs are we seeing in the original 360 degrees? If we go up here, back to this one, and we carry this on to 360 degrees, so that would take us to 180, 270, 360, so we'd see 1, 2, 3, 4 sine graphs. That's why our period is 4, or our period shift is 4 in front of that x. Okay. So then our new period for this question B is going to be 360 divided by that 3. 360 divided by the 3 is 120. So we're seeing a full cos graph in 120 degrees. All right. Then 
the negative is just doing a reflection because a normal cos graph will sit like this with the period shift like that okay so it's just reflected it's mirrored over the x-axis for question c um, a tan graph tan of a third x so there's our period shift so we could work out our period is 180 divided by a third is 540 so we're seeing a whole tan graph in 540 degrees a whole tan graph is one arrow well one branch above one below and an asymptote all right so let's figure out how we get those values so for the tan graph um, from 0 to 360 here are the values for 90 and 270 those are your asymptotes all right so we won't work with those values that's where we draw the dotted line so now the new period is you divide by a third all your x values divided by a third which is the same effect as multiplying by three so zero times three is still zero 45 times three is 135 270 so we carry on going okay our next asymptote will be at 810 and then we get to the period that they want not the period sorry i lie the domain that they want zero to 1080 now because it's only a period shift all our other values will stay the same so our y values at our asymptotes will still happen at the same time so it's zero one asymptote negative one zero one asymptote negative one zero so here it's zero one asymptote negative one zero one asymptote negative one zero it's exactly the same so that's where we are plotting our new values okay All right, then I asked you to do G, H, and then K. So for G, um, if we have a look at our sine 3x plus 2, our sine x values, the original graph looks like this. Because it's 3x, means our period is changing by dividing by 3, or x values. So our x values have been divided by 3. And I've just extended them along so that we can get to the period that they want they want us to go up to 240 so for your period it's going up in 30s each time so we are adding 30 so even though i only got up to this point 360 to divide by 3 i know i'm going up in 30s each time and then looking at your y values there's a vertical shift how do i know it's a vertical shift because there's a plus 2 after everything it's not in a bracket so it's afterwards so our vertical shift is going to change our y values by two so zero becomes zero plus two then one plus two zero plus two negative one plus two etc and we get these y values so now again I, I get to this point so I look at the pattern it's going two three two one two three two one so once I get here I know it's two three two one two okay so i follow the pattern throughout and that's my points again you can use your calculators but it's really not needed the new period will be 360 divided by three you only worry about that number in front of x don't worry about the plus two it's not affecting the period let's talk about if they asked you for what the amplitude would be remember there's a one in front so its amplitude is one or if you look for the middle line going upwards going downwards it's one unit each so amplitude is one our range will be from negative one to positive three minimum to maximum um, now for h h is sine 2x minus 30 where negative 60 to 240 is our domain all right so if i have a look here all right now they have given it to us like this this is the good way we like it like that okay if they give it to you in this form you must factorize out that too otherwise you're not going to see an accurate representation of the horizontal left right shift so in this version um, if we don't factorize then it looks like we're shifting by 60 degrees but we actually in reality shifting by 30 degrees Okay, 
So remember the angle, in this case, let's just get rid of all this. This is sine of 2, and then the angle is actually this piece here. So it's saying if there's a number between sine and the angle, that is the period shift. But if you're given it like this, you are suggesting that that whole bit is the angle, and so there's a 1 in front of it. So you've got to factorize out that too. But question K has an example like that, so we'll get back to that one. So for now, all you've got to realize is that you have a period shift of 2 and a 30 degree shift to the right. So your period shift affects your x values and then the 30 degrees right shifts the x values again. So first to the period shift. So the period shift is um, negative 360. We're dividing by 2 to get our new period values. And then our 30 degree shift will come after that. Okay, so we've divided by 2, and then now I'm going to move it. And with that move, the 230 needs to move 30 degrees to the right. So when we're moving to the right on a graph, everything becomes less positive. Right, so then our new values, or our x's, are the yellow ones here. And then they are going to match with our y values there. All right. Um, now the only problem is in our domain here, sorry I'm zooming in, it's from negative 60 to 240, but the way that my calculation has ended up is that I, do, I have from negative 200 and until 260. So I don't need a whole lot of this information. I need from negative 60, here it is, so negative 60 is going to be 0. Or you could work it out in your calculator if you wanted to. What you do need to work out in your calculator though is for 240 because we end um, at 260. And so we need 240, and so we have 265, and we have 165 and 260, so we need a 240 point. We can't use that last point. We can't go that far with um, our x value. So we're going to stop at 240. So if you type in sine in your calculator, 2, open another bracket, so your calculator will type in sine and it will open a bracket, Open another bracket and then type 240 minus 30 or just 210 and then two brackets afterwards. Like that. And then it tells you that it is um, root 3 over 2. It should be, let's see, yes, root 3 over 2, which to help you plot is 0, 0.87, so just below 1. And so if we go back to our diagram, you can see at 240, it's just, here's the one mark. It's just below one. All right, so you've got some calculator options you can work with um, using your calculator method, or you can work with the method that I've shown you here. And then lastly, your... Question K, that's what I was talking about. It ends up looking very much like the last question, but instead it's got cos 3x minus 90. You've got to factorize to have the three separate. So then it shows you there's a period shift by 3 and a horizontal shift to the right of 30 degrees. Okay, so in order to see that period and horizontal shift properly, you have to factorize. And then you use the same method as we did before. The period, therefore, is going to be 360 divided by 3 for cos is 120. And then you're plotting your new points. All right, I hope that makes sense. And the last video for the trig functions will come up in the next few days where we have to find the equations of the graph and interpret the graphs.